Hey, good morning and welcome to Driftwood Church at the Beach. We are looking forward to getting back to the beach when the beach opens, but for now, we're coming to you live on our Driftwood Church at the Beach Facebook page from different locations. The last few weeks we've been out at the Cove and it's been beautiful out there. This week, in light of Palm Sunday, we are coming to you straight from the palms in my backyard. <laughs> so anyways, I really wish we could all be together uh, uh, in person, but today we're together on video, and um, I'm grateful that we have that ability. Hey, so let me ask you, whether you were here, whether you're at the Cove, or you're at the palms in my backyard, what is our purpose for gathering? Can anybody tell me? The purpose is to help each other see life from God's perspective. And in order for us to help each other see life from God's perspective, we've got to be seeing it that way ourselves. And if there was ever a time where we need to see life from God's perspective, it's right now. So uh, let's pray and ask God to help us see it that way. Father, we know that everything that comes into our life is there by your design. We know that you are in total control, you are totally sovereign, and that nothing is happening without your permission. We know that you have set everything up. Uh, we especially think about those things during times like this, when things are kind of weird and not normal and not on a normal schedule. But help us realize, always, you are setting things up. And you are setting us up to do good works that you have planned for us to do before the beginning of time. We know we're told that in Ephesians. So, Father, um, I pray that as believers, that what we would do is look at the opportunities you have given us to make disciples, which is nothing more than allowing us to see our situation from your perspective and then helping others to do the same. So, Father, um, I pray that as believers we would do that. I pray that if there's somebody watching here today that's never really committed their life to you, they're not sure that they're a quote-unquote believer, they're not sure they're a child of yours, Father, today, I, I pray that today would be the day where you give them enough faith, enough faith that they can't resist to surrender everything they know about themselves to everything they know about you, and um, that today they would begin their life of faith knowing that from this point on, as long as we're on this earth, you will be living inside of them, and you will give them direction and power to do everything you're calling them to do. And when their job is done, you will be faithful to take them home to a perfect paradise in heaven where we will all be together forever with you. We look forward to that day, but while we're here, we look forward to this day and can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Help us see it from your perspective. And I pray for all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, go up Shaka. Woo! All right. Hey, let's have a little bit of music and worship the Lord through that with Ashley, JJ, and Emily. Hey, while we're leading uh, worship this morning, if you guys want, in that comment section on Facebook Live, go ahead and share your praise reports. And you guys can talk about uh, praises for the week, what you've seen God done. Uh, if you guys need anything or if you just want to talk about funny little stories, feel free to share that too. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, I'll Give Thanks by a band called House Fires.
guys pray with me real quick. Father, thank you for this uh, great opportunity um, just to be able to be home, to be able to still worship you. Father, thank you that we have the word readily available before us so that we can still continue to study who you are, the promises that you give, uh, the way that you give hope. Father, if there's anyone this morning that's uh, struggling with peace, uh, just being able to find peace in the circumstances, God, being able to find maybe peace with you, maybe being able to find peace in home, peace with friends, peace with family, God, wherever that struggle might be, God, just a reminder that you've given us the hope. Father, if we're followers of you, if we've given our life to Jesus, God, you've given us the hope of the Holy Spirit, a down payment, uh, to know that one day we'll be with you eternally in heaven. And Father, if there's anyone that's watching this morning that has never given their life to you, Father, I ask that um, they come to know that not only are they a sinner, but that, Father, you've given your life for them through the blood of your son, Jesus, Father, that we have the opportunity to come before you and to be able to come before your throne and be forgiven. And Father, I just ask that right now, um, you just allow for those that are watching, that Driftwood family that's watching, uh, to be reassured of hope and to be able to have that opportunity to share with one another and the glory of you and who you are on this Palm Sunday as we look forward to Easter, Father, knowing that you will be resurrected, uh, that you are resurrected, and because you're resurrected, Father, we have life as well. And I praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we get started, just kind of want to uh, let you know that we have uh, Zoom Bible study groups. We, we, uh, we normally have small group Bible studies every night of the week where we meet somewhere from actually Lakewood Park all the way down to Jensen. Uh, but now what we have uh, are Zoom groups, and God's been doing some pretty cool things on there. Definitely want to invite you to be a part of that. If you go to driftwoodchurch.com and go up to the tag that says groups, you can find uh, all the information you need there. Monday night, uh, man, we're uh, in the book of Ruth. We just got started on that. Awesome book. Tuesday night, Seth is going to be in the book of Romans. Wednesday night, we're back in the book of uh, Joshua about victory and uh, experiencing our abundant life. Thursday night, Captain Max got you going over this message that I preach and talking about it a little further so you can ask questions to kind of dig deeper. Friday night, Zane, dude, they're in the book of Romans, and what a great Bible study that is. And Emily, on uh, Saturday afternoons, uh, they are in the book of Job. So there's some cool Bible studies that you can get to be a part of. And um, it's actually been turning out pretty cool. It's been a good thing. Hey, so let me ask you a question. If I were to somehow be able to magically lift you up and transport you and drop you into the ocean, right behind just a killer swell, right behind six to eight to ten foot glassy perfect waves, how many of y'all would be excited? <laughs> How many of y'all would be terrified? Chances are that if you're a surfer, man, you would be so stoked to be able to do that. You would be saying, you would say, well, as long as I can have my board with me, man, that would be the greatest thing you could ever do. But if you're not a surfer, it would be a terrifying thing. Because the difference between being a surfer and not being a surfer in that situation is, is having a board and knowing how to use it. And so uh, the board gives you the ability to thrive on waves that would drown other people who don't have a surfboard. Get that, the surfboard gives you the ability, if you know how to ride it, it gives you the ability to thrive on waves that would drown other people that don't have a surfboard and don't know how to ride one. You know, God is the same way. And so God has put on my heart to share with you an outline that I've shared for many years again. Uh, I do promise you, and within a couple of weeks, we're gonna start the book of James. I cannot wait. But I can't do it until God tells me to. But I know that I needed to hear this message today. And if you're here, it is by God's providence that you are listening. So stick with it. And I can't wait to hear what God's going to tell us about this. But the point is, is that God, like a surfboard, is going to give us the ability to thrive on waves that would drown people without a surfboard. So here's my thought for you today. Man, my thought for you is don't make waves, but ride them. Everybody do that at home. Nobody can see. You know if we were at church, you'd be doing it also. So don't make waves, 
but ride them. Do that one more time. Don't make waves, but ride them. If you were to get dropped out into the ocean and you had a surfboard, you'd get on that board, you'd paddle, you'd get into the perfect spot, you'd find the wave that's set up for you, you would take off, you would drop in, you'd bottom turn, you would see what the wave's gonna bring, and you would ride the wave uh, to, to the best of your ability, and you would be so stoked, you'd go, you, and you'd paddle right back out and do it again. So you would ride that way. But if you were not a surfer and you didn't have a surfboard and you got dropped in, the last thing you would do is try to ride the wave. Instead, you'd be trying to tread water and you didn't actually be making your own waves. So again, help me out. Don't make waves, ride them. And that's what I want to show you today as we talk about God through the surfboard. So the first thing I want you to see on this board, this just happens to be one board. It happens to be the board. It's one of our lesson boards. And um, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully by uh, the beginning of June, we'll be able to get back out on the beach and have Beach Day Mondays where we shove everybody and anybody into waves all day long on Mondays from 9 to noon. We call it Beach Day Monday and we wouldn't miss it for the world. So pray that that all gets opened back up again. But this is one of our lesson boards here. And any board that I look at, in fact, you wouldn't have to look far around my house. Right on my back porch, I've got three classic boards hanging up there that have great memories. In my garage, I have boards. My car, I have boards. I have a trailer full of boards. Because I love boards. They give me the ability to thrive on waves that would drown people without boards. That's why I love God also. So when I look at this board, I see God Almighty. I see God the Father. And there's three things I see about God the Father when I look at this board. If I were to be able to get on the inside of this board, maybe the board broke. Maybe the board came apart. I, I've seen the inside of a surfboard. I've seen it being made. And you know what's on the inside? Who can tell me what's on the inside? Foam. There's foam on the inside. And when you look at the foam on the inside of a surfboard, you see the countless numbers of holes. For me, when I see that, it reminds me of the fact that God knows everything. Man, God knows everything. How important is that? Man, to, to be hooked up in a relationship with somebody who knows everything. How many of you know the media right now does not know everything? How many of y'all understand the medical world concerning this virus? They don't know everything. How many of you know that our local governments, our state governments, our federal governments, they don't know everything? And how many of y'all know you don't know everything, as much as that would be hard for some of you to admit? We don't know everything, and it's not important to know everything, but what's important is to know the one that does know everything. So listen to this, man. This board reminds me of God the Father, and the foam on the inside reminds me of the fact that God knows everything. Listen to Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and then I'm going to jump down to verses 17 and 18. But listen to this, and see how much God knows just about you. He knows more about you than you know about you. But he knows just as much about everything. God is the expert at everything. So listen to Psalm 139, starting in verse 1. Oh Lord, you've examined my heart. You know, what's the next word? You're there. Everything about me. Do you understand that? How many of y'all woke up wondering what in the world's going on with you? You know, last night you went to bed wondering what's going on. God knows everything about you, he says. You know me when I sit down. You know when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. What does God know? He knows your thoughts. He knows everything you do. He said, you place your hand, oh, you go before me and follow me. Look at that. You go before me and follow me. So God is in front of you, and God is behind you. And if you're a believer, he lives in you. Your God is so big that he encompasses you, and he knows everything about you, including what you're getting ready to face and everything you have already faced. He says, such wonderful knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. Do you know just you, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, the thoughts God has about you are too many to even be able to count. God loves you and knows everything about you. That's why he wants you to hook up with him and be in a relationship with him. That's why I want to show you how awesome he is and the fact that God knows everything. Listen to this. Verse 18 of Psalm 139, I can't even count the thoughts you have towards me. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, 
you are still with me. So when I look inside the surfboard and I see the foam, I see all the holes that are in there, I think about it, it reminds me of the fact that God knows everything. But the next thing I think about when I look at the surfboard is this stringer right here. <coughs> now back in the day, we used to have wood stringers. They used to actually even try to make boards without stringers, and they keep still trying to make them with materials. But the fact is that board's not very strong without a stringer. This is a carbon fiber stringer. And what that does is the stringer in there gives the board the strength so it doesn't break. So when I look at the stringer, I think about the fact that God can do anything. So not only does God know everything, but God can do anything. There is nothing God cannot do. And I just want you to think about one of the things he does as I share with you Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6. Listen to what this says, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies or the atmosphere, atmosphere displays his craftsmanship. How many of you have ever gone out at night and you just looked at the stars? Man, I've done that here. I've done that in the Bahamas. I've done it out in the ocean. I've done it in Africa. I've done it in Trinidad. I've done it in Jamaica. I've done it in the middle of Haiti. I've done it in Orlando, Florida. I've done it in Nebraska. I've looked everywhere I've ever been. I can look up. I can look up and I can see some stars. Look between the clouds if it's not clear, but you can see the stars. And the point of God making those stars is not so we can spend billions of dollars to try to find out if there's life there or not. But the real reason he made them is to declare who he is and to let you know that he loves you and wants to take care of the life we know that is right here. And the way that he can take care of that is by us getting in a relationship that he's offering us. So man, when I look at those stars, I think of the fact of how powerful God is. You understand those stars? I'm not a genius when it comes to this, but I understand those stars. Many of them are bigger than our planet. And if one of those stars was getting ready to crash and fall into our planet, what else would matter? Nothing. But why aren't they crashing? Because God Almighty can do anything, and He keeps them all in perfect orbit. He keeps them in their place. If one of them was coming in, could you, with your strength, stop it from coming and crashes? No, you would run and hide. But my God is so strong, He can do anything. And if He can keep those giant planets in line, can't He handle your little situation and mine? Man, I am so grateful to have a God that knows everything. A God that can do anything. But even in addition to that, uh, look, look at this in Psalms 19. Uh, again, let's finish this verse. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display, display His craftsmanship. Look at verse 2. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make Him known. Anywhere in the world you go, you can see God's glory in those stars. Look what it even says, verse 3. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. It doesn't have to have a voice because of the magnitude of the fact that God can do everything. Yet their message has gone throughout all the earth. And look at this, and their words to all the world. Listen again, God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. We could go into a, a weather lesson on how the sun creates all the weather that we have by, by the way it goes around, by, by the way it moves. But we're not talking about that today. Just understand, man, that the sun is so powerful. Those stars are powerful. And who made them? God. How many of you have seen a beautiful sunrise? Hey, let me ask you a question. How did the sunrise you made this morning compare to the sunrise that God made? Oh, what? You didn't make a sunrise. That sounds like a conversation he had with Job when Job was complaining. He said, let me just ask you a few things if you think I'm not in control. How was your sunrise? And Job had to say, oh, I didn't have a sunrise the same way we have to say it. Man, God makes sure there's a sunrise every morning. He controls that, and that's something way out of our realm. When you see that beautiful sunrise, you can blame no one but God for that. He gets all the credit, all the glory. Verse 6, the sun rises at one end of the heavens, follows its course over the end. Nothing can hide from its heat. Man, all of that is just one little example to let me know that God can do anything. So the phone reminds me God knows everything. The stringer reminds me 
a fact that God can do everything. So we've got a God that knows everything, a God that can do everything. But really what's important is, is, is also that God is everywhere. So this God that knows everything, this God that can do anything, he's everywhere. When I think of the, foam, the fiberglass on the outside of this board, it protects it from corruption. It protects it. It covers the entire board. And it reminds me of God's omnipresence, the fact that God is everywhere. I want you to listen again as we go back to Psalm 139. And I want you to see of how God is everywhere just in your life. Now, if you take the fact that he's everywhere in everyone's life, he is everywhere. There's no place that he isn't. So you are not in a unique situation, in a corner, hidden, and God cannot find you and does not know what's going on. But instead, he is there, and he wants to be a vital part of your life. He wants to be your life. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Man, so listen to Psalm 139, starting in verse 7. I can, uh, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. So let me ask you a question. Is there any place you can go where God is not? No, not according to the psalmist. And verse 8, if I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. That's a good place for God to be if you're a believer, because when you're dead, who are you counting on to raise you from the dead? I'm counting on God, so I'm glad he's there. And look what it says, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Do you get that? Even when you were being formed in your mother's womb after conception, which is where life begins, when you were there, God was there. My little granddaughter, Alana. Alana, right? <laughs> Alana. She's being formed in Ashley's womb right now. I'm trying to explain the whole belly button thing to Keone, man. But he'll get it one day. But man, dude, God is there forming Alana. In fact, the Bible even tells us that he's been forming her ever before she was even conceived. He says, thank you for making me so wonderful. Oh, look, verse 13. <coughs> you made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. <laughs> There's a prayer for you. Thank God for making you complex. <laughs> How many of y'all a little more complex than what you would like to be? God made you that way. But the only way you're going to survive that way, the only way you're going to thrive is by having a thriving relationship with Him. <clears throat> Again, God is that board that gives you the ability to thrive on waves that drown other people. Look at verse 14. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You may not like who you are. You may not like how you shaped your body. You may not like your ears, your arms, your butt, your whatever. You may not like it, but God gave that to you. You are wonderfully made by him. It says, you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. Verse 16, you saw me before I was ever born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. God is there in every part of your life, and he always will be. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Man, what an awesome thing to know that God knows everything. To know that God can do anything and that God is everywhere. That's what I think of when I think of this board. Remember the foam? That's his thoughts. He knows everything. The stringer, that's his strength. God can do anything. The fiberglass that covers it, God is everywhere. What a sad, sad thing to know that about the most awesome being that always has been and always will be, the most powerful one in the universe, to know all of that and be invited into a relationship with him and never take advantage of that. Man, there's a way where you got to get connected. So the first part, the board talks about God the Father. But there's another part to this surfboard. Um, and the other part that I want to look at is reminds me of Christ, reminds me of Jesus. It's this leash. And this leash 
is what is going to connect me to this board. So here it is, man. God, God the Father and God the Son, man, they made a deal with us. God the Father said, Jesus is going to come, be 100% man, 100% human. He's going to live a perfect life. He's never going to sin. He's going to die on a cross to pay for your sins. And if you can believe that, if you believe that, God gave you the faith to believe it. And he wants you to take that little, tiny mustard seed grain of faith that he's given you to believe it and say, all right, I believe it. And I want to be connected to an almighty God that knows everything, that can do anything, and it's everywhere. And I believe the only way I can do that is through Jesus Christ. Now, if I put this leash on me, if I put it on my ankle, let me ask you a question. Am I holding on to the leash or is the leash holding on to me? Am, am I connecting myself to the board or is the leash connecting me to the board? It's the leash. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you get eternal life. He eternally connects you to God. He's the one who connects you. He's the one who keeps you connected. Once you become his child, there's nothing you can do to not be his child ever again. So the leash connects us to God. And I want to show you something out of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 says, For there is one God. There is one God. There is only one that knows everything, that can do anything, and that's everywhere. There's only one. And it says there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity. And we are told by the Apostle Paul, as he's telling young Timothy, it is the man, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the only way you can be connected to God. Jesus himself even said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And you have a deal offered to you. You can choose to die and face Almighty God and be judged according to your sins. And you will fail because you've known you've blown perfection. Or you can choose the deal that's being offered right now. The deal that's been offered ever since God had created man, and that is a deal that there would be a Messiah, and we believe he sent a Messiah, and it's that Messiah that if we surrender ourselves to him, that he will eternally connect us to God and keep us connected. It's a promise. So man, I pray that if you know how awesome God is, that you are connected, and you are connected through Christ. There are no other deals. He is the only way. And yes, that is very exclusive, but that's what he said. Listen to this. Again, there is one God, one mediator, who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. We've blown perfection. He accomplished it, and he lets us apply it to our life if we surrender ourselves. Verse 6, he gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. What's the right time? The right time is right now if you need that message. Maybe you've already accepted you need the encouragement to know that you are still eternally connected to God. Maybe you've never accepted the deal and today's the day and you just simply surrender everything you know about yourself to him and say, I want you to take over my life. It's yours and I believe what you did on the cross is sufficient to pay for my sins. And my desire is to live with you the rest of, live for you the rest of the days of my life. I know I'm not perfect, but I know I'm forgiven, but I'm surrendering myself to you. And I believe I will have eternal life. A quality of life that starts right now. Man, if he's given you the desire to do it, do it. Because without that desire, you'll never do it. So we have God the Father. We have the, the foam, which represents that he knows everything. We have the stringer that represents to me that he can do anything. The glass that encompasses the board is that God is everywhere. And, and that awesome being has made a deal where we can be connected to him through Jesus Christ, which is the leash. But any of you that have ever surfed, you know that on a board, you know that when you first get that board, it's pretty slippery. So you may give your life to Christ. Maybe you did give your life to Christ. And maybe, maybe you've been slipping around life saying, where is that abundant life? Where is that peace? Where is that joy? Where is that, all those things I was promised, what's well, found in the wax? The wax is the word of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus was the word. And this wax, what we do every day is we get into the word the same way every time I walk out to the beach, I put a fresh layer of wax on this board. 
I add another layer of sticky bumps on top of the already existing sticky bumps. And that new layer of sticky bumps gives me the ability to stick to this. I'm going to tell you, if you're a believer, you know how awesome God is and you are connected to Him, but you are not in the Word. I know you're slipping around in life. You need to get into the Word. You need to just read it. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. That's the author. He will tell you what it says. And, and He will give you applications for it, but you've got to get in it. You need to get with other believers who are trying to help each other see life from God's perspective. That's what our small Zoom groups do, is we go through the Word and, and figure out what it means and how to apply it to our lives. But you need to be able to apply this wax or the Word to your life so that you don't slip around. So again, here we go. God the Father, uh, God knows everything. That's the phone. God can do anything. That's the stringer. God is everywhere. That's the fiberglass. God wants us to be connected to him. That's Jesus, and that's this leash. But God, in a practical sense, has given us instructions to stay stuck to him on a daily basis, and that is this wax. Listen, here's what he tells us out of, uh, out of Matthew 4.4, 4, or actually out of... Uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired or God breathed that is inspired by God. And listen to this. It is useful to teach us what's true and make us realize what's wrong in our life. So as we read scripture, he's saying, hey, you know what? This is what the truth is. And you're like, well, wow, that's not what I believe. And so he's revealing to us what is wrong in our life. That would be one thing for someone to correct, someone to say, oh, hey, that's wrong and this is right. But not only does Scripture do that, listen to what else it does. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what's right. So not only does he say, wait, here's the truth that doesn't line up with your life, but here's what you can do. And this is how you do the right thing. And I've given you a Holy Spirit we're going to talk about next that gives you the ability to apply it to your life. So he not only corrects us and lets us know something's wrong, but he teaches us how to do the right thing. And it's through his word. You don't need to get his word only from somebody else. Man, can you imagine? You say, yes, I go to church every Sunday. Can you imagine trying to get physically fit and only going to the gym once a week? Can you imagine trying to be, be, be physically nourished and only eating one meal a day? Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's Matthew 4, 4. And that's what Jesus answered Satan when he was being tempted in the wilderness for 40 days. He memorized scripture so he could apply scripture. That is the truth. The only truth we have is scripture. You've got to know it. You've got to put it in your heart. You've got to put it into action and you've got to apply it. That is what's going to keep you stuck to God. And most of us have more time to be in Scripture than we've ever had. Maybe it would be more profitable to be in Scripture than be on the news. Maybe it would be more profitable to be on script in Scripture than on Facebook or social media and trying to solve all the problems of the world with all the other people that don't know everything. But instead, spending your time with the guy who knows everything, can do anything, and is everywhere. I'm not saying don't be informed, but man... Pour your life into something that's going to last forever, and that's the scripture. It allows you to be stuck to God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is what's going to give you faith. Trials are the thing that's going to show you how much faith you have. You want to grow your faith? Get into the word of God and start. That's what's going to grow your faith. So the next thing, man, we've got God the Father, which is the board. The foam represents he knows everything. The stringer represents the fact that he can do anything. The fiberglass represents that he's everywhere. He wants to be connected to us. That's why he sent Jesus, which is the leash that connects us to him. He gave us his word, and, and, and in his word, he gives us principles and faith that allow us to stay stuck to him. But what if you just had a bunch of instructions and no power to apply it? Aren't you glad that's not what God has done in our life? If you were to turn this board over, what you would see is you would see fins here. These fins, if you were to try to surf a board without fins, you would slide all over the place. In fact, when they first started surfing, the boards didn't have fins. They'd be riding and they'd put a foot in to drag them and go this way. Put a foot in back to drag them and go the other way. 
And it wasn't a matter of if you fall, it's when you were going to fall. You know, you're going to fall if you have no fins because you have no power and direction. So the fins on the surfboard remind me of the Holy Spirit of God that I received when I was born again. I received all the Holy Spirit I will ever have, but in the rest of my life here in the flesh, I am giving Him more and more of me. <laughs> and I'm experiencing more and more of Him. Because as J.J. mentioned earlier from Zane's Bible study on Friday night, the Holy Spirit is a down payment. And the more we surrender to, to, more we surrender to Him and crucify the flesh, the more of the Holy Spirit we will experience, the more of heaven we will experience here on earth. You see, when we get to heaven, there'll be nothing but us and God. But here we have a flesh that gets in the way. The Holy Spirit gives us power and direction. So if you want to know what you're supposed to be doing right now, I think your marching orders for this coronavirus situation, for this lockdown, for this quarantine, whether you think it's a crock or you think it's the worst thing in the world, whatever you think, it does not matter. Whether you think it's conspiracy or you think it's, it's just the end times, whether you think whatever you think, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to be doing during this time. Listen to this. 2 Timothy, oh, I'm sorry, listen to this in, uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. We usually talk about verse 8. That's the verse we like. It says, man, when the, you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive power. And that power is going to give you the ability to be a witness here, there, and everywhere. I want that power. But listen to the context of it. Starting in Acts 1. Because everybody wants an Acts 2 church. Oh, we want all this power. We want it. And, and, but listen to the context. Here we are in Acts chapter 1, uh, at the very beginning, um, child, starting in verse 6. So when the apostles were with Jesus, this was after he rose from the dead, and this was before his ascension, the apostles were with them, and they kept asking him, they kept asking, kept asking, kept asking, kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore the kingdom? Hey, is this the time that Jesus is coming back? How many of y'all would totally dig the fact that Jesus would be coming back right now? Man, that would be awesome. I'd love for Jesus to come back right now. In even the Gospels, man, they kept asking, Jesus, what are the signs? What are the times? What's happening? And he said, look, man, it's going to get so bad, so bad that you're going to think I have to come back, and I'm not. And then things will get better. And it's going to get so bad, you're going to think I'm coming back, and I'm coming back, and I'm not. But things will get better. And when there's peace and safety, and you think you've got it all handled again, I'm going to come in like a thief in the night. And I'm going to take my own. And we're going to heaven, and we're going to have a wedding while the earth is in the tribulation period. And that's when it all starts. Is this right now the time? Is everything being set up for a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world economy? Sure looks like it to me, but I don't know when he's coming back, and neither do you, and I can prove that in Scripture. Verse 6, when the apostles kept asking him, Lord, when are you going to free Israel? When are you coming back? Verse 7, he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know. Man, we can speculate. We see the birth pains. They're getting closer. They're getting stronger. Everybody knows things are falling apart, but we don't know how bad they will get before he comes back. We don't know when it's going to get better, and he sneaks up on us like a thief in the night. We don't know. So he says, it's not for you to know those things. Don't focus on those things. Encourage yourself with those things, knowing it's going to happen. Don't be ignorant of them. But you have a job. He said the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. It's not for you to know. Here's our verse 8. He says, but, this is a big but in the Bible. But instead of focusing, instead of being frantic, instead of looking only at that, he said this. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. You know what a witness is? It's not just a mouth. A witness is someone that testifies to the fact that God knows everything, that God can do anything, and God is everywhere. A witness testifies the fact that that Almighty God has offered a deal for us to be connected eternally with Him. A witness testifies how the wax of the Word keeps us firm and stuck to God on a day-to-day -day basis. A witness testifies in their everyday life 
that the Holy Spirit, the fins, give us power and direction as we crucify the flesh and we walk in the Spirit. He tells us where to go and gives us the power to do that. That's what he says, man. Here's your purpose. I don't care if it's coronavirus. I don't care if the economy falls. I don't care if it's World War III. I don't care if it's the best economy in the world. Your purpose is to be a witness to who God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are. And the only way you can be a witness is taking every single thing that God brings in your life and seeing it from His perspective. Doing what He wants you to do through it because as Seth likes to say, it is counterintuitive to what our mind wants to do and what the world wants to do. We do what God wants us to do. It looks like it's going to fail, but it totally works, and God gets the credit. God gets the glory. So he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And by the way, without the Holy Spirit, you have no power. You just have man-made plans. You have the same thing every corporation has. And, and you might, just like the corporate executives, bail because it would be easier to bail before it fails than to be in the long run to make it go through. Who knows? But with the Holy Spirit, you can stick with it because you know God's got a plan in all of it. It's by His design. He said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Everywhere. Guess what we're getting to do right now online? When we had little driftwood out on the beach, we had people from all over the world coming only in little groups. Now, this is www. What is that? What is that? www.driftwoodchurch.com, right? Or is it .org? .com. Dot .com, yeah. Dude, I have a bookmark. But, man, what's www stand for? It's not World Wide Wrestling League, all right? I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it is the World Wide Web. God has forced us on the World Wide Web. Maybe he is using this for churches everywhere, all over the place, to focus their efforts on the World Wide Web. Now, WWW might mean something else now, but I'll tell you what, when it first came out, that's what it meant. And that's where all of this is going. So he says, man, I'm going to give you power to be my witness, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, that's right here. In Judea, that's Florida. In Samaria, that's America. And to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is like these fins, man. When you have fins on your board, you drive them, you pump them. It gives you power. It gives you direction. You can't turn without them, and you can't have any power without them. Same thing with the Holy Spirit of God. One more verse, and we're done. Listen to John 14, 26, in case you're wondering, well, what do I do? How do I, what do I do with this? What do I do with this situation? What do I do with this one? I'm going to tell you the simple answer is ask him. When you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit came into your life. You received all the Holy Spirit you will ever receive or be able to receive or need. The rest of your life is him receiving all of you. You kill in the flesh and walking in the spirit. Verse 26, look at the promise Jesus was telling his disciples at, at the night before he was betrayed, the night before he's crucified. Hey guys, I'm going away. I'm going away, but it's actually going to be better for you than me being here in person. It's going to be better for you to have me, the, what I'm offering you. It's going to be someone exactly like me, only in spirit form, the advocate, the paraclete, the walk alongside you. He can be with each of you everywhere all the time and do anything because he's God. And look what he says in verse 26, John 14, 26. But when the Father sends the advocate, the paraclete, the one to walk alongside you, the Holy Spirit, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. Look at this. He will teach you everything. What's he going to teach you? Everything. What does he know? Everything. So is there anything the Holy Spirit can't teach you? No. He can teach you everything, and yet that's a promise we have. Everything you need to know to do what God's asking you to do during this time, He can, will, and is going to teach you if you want to be a student. If you want to surrender the flesh and do what He wants instead of what you want, don't miss what He's trying to teach you in this so special time of life. Never a more exciting time to be alive if, if, as your spiritual surfer. Dude, take me and drop me into the biggest swell you got, God. 
because I know I'm connected to the mightiest surfboard, which is you, and I'm connected by the most reliable leash, which is the Holy Spirit, and I've got the best sticky bumps anywhere, which is the Word of God, and I have the most powerful fins in the world to steer and guide me. Drop me in. Let me thrive on the waves that are going to drown other people, but the fact is you don't have to drown if you will just get to know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in this way. And all that takes is you surrendering everything you know about yourself to everything you know about Him. Listen again, 1426, John 1426. But when the Father sends the Holy Spirit, that, uh, He will teach you everything. And listen to this for us old people. He will remind us of everything He's already taught us. Isn't that a great thing? He's already taught you something, man, and you forgot it. Dude, He'll remind you of it again. So I'm just saying this. Man, what an exciting time to be alive. What an exciting... Do I know what's going on? I have no clue. I don't know what President Trump knows. I don't know what China knows. I don't know what you know. I don't have to know what you know. I just got to know the one that knows everything. And I do. I know I got a powerful God that knows everything. He can do anything. And he's everywhere. And on June 27th, 1988, man, he hooked me up with a deal that he's hooked many of you up with and wants to hook some others up with, and that is to be connected to him eternally. All you got to do is surrender your wretched flesh. You're your flesh that makes all kinds of mistakes. Your flesh that thinks it knows everything. Your flesh that thinks it can do anything. Your flesh that thinks it can be everywhere. Your flesh that, that thinks it's all powerful and it's not. Surrender that to him through Christ. If he's given you the ability to believe that what Christ did on the cross will pay for your sins, man, surrender it to him. Get hooked to him eternally. That's what it's about. And once you are, get into his word. That's the wax that keeps us stuck to him every day. And then do what he is asking you to do because chances are he's asking you to do something you can't do in the flesh. He's asking you to do something that you don't have the power to do. You don't have the ability to do. But guess what? You have the Holy Spirit of God. You have these fins. He will give you the power and the ability and the direction to do what he's asking you to do. It's up to you. There's the invitation, man. I love you guys, but not as much as God, as much as Jesus loves you. He wants to hook you up with this deal. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much uh, for encouraging me with this message, reminding me of the fact that you know everything. Father, there's so many unknowns right now. Father, we're watching videos, YouTube. We're seeing all kinds of things out there that don't make any sense. But I think if you wanted them to make sense, you could make them make sense to us. But maybe the reason they're not making sense is because you want us to focus on the one job that we have, and that is to make disciples. That is to be a witness for you of how awesome you are. I think the greatest witness would be to have love, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control, all of the fruit of the Spirit exemplified right now in this time when so many people are freaking out and it's not. Father, um, Show us what we need to know and what we don't. Father, give us confidence to know that you can do anything. Father, I pray you'd break us. I pray that you would confirm in our hearts that we are like grass that withers. And we're here for a short period of time. And we're not nearly as powerful as we'd like to believe we are. But instead, you want us to tap into your power. And anything we need, you'll show us how to, how to get it. You'll provide it. You'll do whatever it takes because there's nothing out of reach for you. And God, for the people that are alone, Father, I know, man, as an extrovert, as a people person, wanting to hug people so bad, high five, anything. I'll take anything right now, Father. I got to say, I'm, I'm feeling a little lonely sometimes, even if I'm around people and I can't touch. That's my love language. That's how my tank is filled. Father, I pray that we would fill our tank with you, with your presence. Remind us again that we're not alone. We're never alone. We're with you eternally. There's no place we can go where you're not there. Thank you, Father, for the hookup through the leash of Christ, what Christ did on the cross, and Christ making it possible for us to be hooked up with you forever. Father, I do pray that if someone needs to hook up, that today would be the day they put the leash on. It's a great leash that connects us. It doesn't restrict us. It connects us to you because when we wipe out, all we got to do is grab the leash and climb back on the board and drop back in on another wave. It's an awesome thing. 
instead of losing the group. So, Father, give someone the hookup today. Father, for those who are, are maybe spending more time in something other than your word, that today maybe they would realize that we are what we eat. <laughs> and you tell us we need to eat scripture. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that as we eat scripture, our faith would grow. That we would spend more time in scripture, more time just reading your word, than books about your word. We'd spend more time reading your word than we would watching TV or even being on the internet. Father, um, I pray that we would saturate ourselves with the truth so we'd stay stuck to you. And Father, I pray we'd never try to do it in the flesh, but we would do it all in the presence and in the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, you show us how to do all of that so that as believers we can be witnesses and living life with you, we would be able to thrive on waves that are drowning other people. But as we see those waves drowning others, we would come by and offer them the very board that's allowing us to thrive. We'd offer them you. Father, thank you for loving us, and I pray that we would apply this in our lives during this most unique, super special, really weird opportunity that you have created for us in 2020. I pray we'd be stoked about this opportunity and wouldn't miss a single thing you want for us to do, to be the safe experience. And I pray for these things in Jesus' name. You! There's Leah behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess our other member of our praise team came up. <laughs> She's been behind you all, all the whole time. Uh, real quick, guys, if you uh, want to join us on small groups, anybody is welcome to join us, uh, anyone that wants to be a part of a small group. And so I'm going to post that link. Uh, to where our groups are at um, online so you guys could join us on Zoom. And uh, just anything really throughout the week. Uh, one real fun thing leading up to Easter, since everyone has a photo challenge going on right now, uh, if you guys will take a picture of a sunrise at some point this week and just post it up and tag us, and that would be really fun and uh, just something to do. But other than that, thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. Make sure to share this if you want to. And it was fun commenting with you guys earlier. So have a great week. <laughs>